right, guys, the real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, with the final in my series about Ray Laconico knives. Uh, this is going to be a design slash, uh, yeah, design review meets like my collection and uh, overview and just kind of talking about like what works in knives and what doesn't. So I hope you've been enjoying the series. I enjoy talking about these and I wanted to share the last two of what I currently own from Ray Laconico. And that is these two EWCs. Uh, EWCs were concepts uh, from Ray Laconico for everywhere carry. Uh, there are some places in the world where you are not allowed to carry a locking knife. Hence, the design to go with a double detent slip joint such as this. And I thought it was such an excellent concept uh, that I actually own too. <laughs> so from these, I have the drop point. I don't know. Is that drop point more of a spear point? With Ray Lacano, Ray Laconico, it's kind of tough to tell. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit more of a spear point, I would say. Uh, but... This is one, and the other is the slayback style, which between these two is my favorite, actually. And not just because of the aesthetics or what you would think. There is actually a real functional reason why I prefer the slayback. So uh, let me get into it. But let, let's talk about the concept behind these. So I, I do travel a fair amount. Uh, I do have family overseas. And in one of the countries where my families live, you are not legally allowed to carry a locking knife. So this was of particular appeal to me because now I could put a, a knife into my check luggage, take it with me, carry it, and even if we did have any run-ins, because little to you guys, or little do you guys know, I'm kind of a crazy guy, and so are some of my cousins. Um, if I did get caught with this thing, uh, it would not be illegal for me to use or carry, uh, because it is not locking. So, how is this achieved? Well. They, uh, Monterey Bay Knives, who made these, as well as Ray Laconico, took a slightly different approach to the double detent slip joint. Uh, they actually kind of treated it as like a traditional knife. So there is a lock bar that goes the entire length here, but it's only on one side. Sometimes you'll see manufacturers in an attempt to make the lock up very strong, they'll do it on both sides. ZT is a good example of this. Civivi is another good example of this. And in my opinion, that doesn't lend itself to this sort of snappy, quick, fast, easy to deploy action. And it actually makes the knives feel a little bit more gritty, to be 100% honest. Um, I don't know, they're, they're just not as enjoyable to use as these Monterey Bay knives are. Uh, also, this was done in a very thin blade stock because there's no way that this knife is going to be used for hard use, uh, particularly with the lack of a strong lockup. And it's just going to be used for more sort of like basic tasks. Like, okay, I can do some light food prep. I can cut, you know, my meal, for example, with it. Um, and, you know, again, maybe even letter opening, you know, nothing too serious. But in the grand scheme of things, a very nice, comfortable design. Again, neutral ergonomics and... This is a nice little feature that was taken into consideration. If the lock breaks, 
uh, Ray put enough sort of additional meat here so that if it does close, the blade is actually not coming in contact with your finger. I don't know if that's going to come through, but there's this flat portion here that if you do grab the knife correctly and not like get up here, you know, that is actually going to prevent the blade from making contact with your skin, which I really appreciate it. But also if you put your thumb here where you typically would, now that's going to provide some resistance from that thing snapping onto your hand, right? So really a kind of well thought out, very simple and usable everywhere carry knife. And there are actually a lot of times where I have just carried this as my EDC because it's so simple, it's so basic, and if I'm not looking to carry something uh, heavy and I want something like incredibly light because this is just thin carbon fiber with steel liners and a very nice thin blade, th this actually makes for an excellent, excellent EDC and even if you're going into the office um, it's it's non-offensive it is a little kind of snappy for the office I, I will warn you um, generally speaking people like something that's a little bit more slow to deploy in kind of professional environments like this guy uh, but Really, in the grand scheme of things, this thing is really, really nice. Personally, also, I love the fidget factor of it. You know, you can really, once you get it down, you can really, really snap this thing around quite a bit. It does run on bearings as well, which just makes the action so smooth. Really, just a, a delightful design. Now, my favorite of the two is this guy, the Slayback. Now, personally, I've never been a very big fan of the Swayback sort of knives. Just this upsweep here, the, the sort of worn cliffy blade here. I also don't tend to pinch grip a lot myself, uh, but I do prefer this design particularly for the locking mechanism a, a bit more than this guy. And the reason why is when you have a non-locking knife, I personally want to have as much of the, the pressure on the blade ensuring that the, the knife stays open. And having a worn cliff you know, sort of flat blade profile ensures that. So I'm willing to actually shift my standard, whoo, nice spin there, uh, my standard approach, you know, from kind of hammer gripping or even saber gripping a knife to get over towards more pinch gripping the knife like this because this does keep more pressure on the blade. But even in this position here, it, it's way more secure because you've got the maximum of torque hitting the blade edge all the way out to the tip. If you were to try and do the same with this guy, the roll off here of the edge means that you're getting decreased torque as you get to the tip which is more likely to cause the, the knife for you, let's say if you're cutting through something that's a little bit tougher to kind of grip and snap, you know? So I do prefer to have actually more of a worn cliff or uh, just a, like a sheep's foot sort of blade profile with a non-locking knife like this. Uh, just because I feel it's a little bit more secure, a little bit more day-to-day -day useful, and ultimately, <coughs> pardon me, this is kind of meant to be a utility knife in the purest sense. 
non-locking means that it's not going to be used for heavy work. It's not going to be used for uh, really like hardcore tasks or anything like that. So in as much, I want it to be as utilitarian as possible. And between the two, the slayback is just that. It really is a much more utilitarian, everyday sort of like task knife, a little bit more than the drop point version here. Uh, now, if I really had a problem with the drop point, I would have sold it. I would have gotten rid of it. But it just highlights the differences between blade shape and purpose of use and even construction for you guys. And th this is kind of what I want the big takeaway to be. Like when you come up here, you really have to get up here, which if this thing sticks, you're much more likely to break the lock given the angle that you have to put pressure on, which to me is a little bit more concerning versus if I have this guy, I have got maximum torque on that tip and it's at a flat relationship with my grip. So that thing's really not going to break the lock ever. And I can go at incredibly low angles and still get the same result. So for me, when I look at non-locking knives such as this, slip joints, etc., I do believe that having something in a more flat Warncliffe style profile or a sheep's foot kind of profile is the safer uh, choice for use. So it's not just an aesthetic thing. I really truly believe that this is the better approach and makes this m the knife that I'm much more likely to carry between the two of them. Uh, and you know, it, it is an additional sort of uh, a benefit that I do like the aggressiveness of this design. There's just a little bit more character to it. This is definitely a very non-offensive knife. It's very, you know, simplistic, clean in the traditional Laconica way. I do think this is an excellent effort by him. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but this is definitely more my speed. And I love how subtle he was with this sort of curvature of the traditional sway back. He didn't make it overly exaggerated like you see in a lot of the, the slip joints. So this guy really like nestles in. I feel very confident using this in a number of grips. I can actually get really hard up here on the tip. And even if I do break the lock, I don't have the fear that I can't control the blade. But even here, if let's say I'm using this as my cutting example, look, I can maintain this incredibly well. And I can even come back and still maintain the same amount of control very easily without risking breaking that locking mechanism. So personally... This is definitely my end-all, be-all for my everywhere sort of carry knife. By all means, the Slayback by Monterey Bay Knives. Uh, I do have a design that I've done with Kubi. They are dragging their feet on bringing it out. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it is not a, a um, worn cliff like the Slayback. It is a little bit more sheep's footy. So let them know if you're, you know, kind of interested or impatient because they, they do have a bunch of my designs from, from 2019 that they still haven't put out yet. But I hope you guys like this look into the Master of Minimalism, Ray Laconico. These are two of my absolute favorite knives in the collection as well. But as you guys saw, I have a very, very specific collection from Ray and let me grab the baby. Yes, the EWC or the Easy E. 
And these all are just tremendous, tremendous knife designs. Uh, Ray Laconico is a legend in the game for a reason. The reputation is absolutely well-earned, well-deserved. And this guy really shows that, like, paying attention to the fundamentals, paying attention to ergonomics, paying attention to the purpose of use trumps everything else. And when you combine that with premium materials, premium construction, uh, you have an unbeatable combination. And beautiful at that. Right, that that's what I feel is so lacking in a lot of today's knives. They have no personality, but the, you would never say that about a Ray Laconico knife. You really can't. They all have a distinct, subtle personality that is all him, and that's that's what makes him one of the absolute masters of the game. Hopefully, in the future, if I can afford it, I will pick up a mini pincher from Monterey Bay Knives, but until then, this is my Ray Laconico collection, and I hope you guys enjoyed this look at all these different knives, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace!